uh, Julia, and I'm from Seattle. I was born in a, in a Christian home, um, baptized in the Holy Spirit since I was nine years old. Um, I always knew Lord, the Lord. I knew of the Lord. I can't say that I knew Him. Um, but life led me a little astray, and I went into living a very, very rebellious lifestyle um, because I didn't want to follow the religious footsteps of my parents. Um, that led me into the sin, a lot of sin, which a lot of opened the doors to um, to the demons to come in. And I start, I was addicted to pornography. I was addicted to masturbation. Um, I started questioning my sexuality. Um, I started being interested in the girls, and I started realizing quickly something is off. Um, and when I started to make efforts to change my life um, I would get I felt like there was a block that wouldn't allow me to come near God a year ago when you guys had a conference in Federal Way and um, at that time the last day of the conference you guys didn't pray for deliverance you're praying for the baptism of the Holy Spirit and uh, for the healing and when Pastor Vlad started praying for the baptism of the Holy Spirit I started sensing the presence of God so strong I started gagging um, I would try to say Jesus. I couldn't even say Jesus because my jaws would clench so much. Um, I would, I started, I panicked. I said, God, I'm manifesting. There's nobody around me to even pray for me. Like, what am I going to do? Um, and I just fell to my knees and I started foaming. Um, I felt this enlightenment. I felt like something had completely left me. Um, and God said, okay, now pray for my holy fire to, to fill you. The things that you shared with me a little bit earlier, can you mention that how it was like physical things that would attack your body? Can you just share briefly about that? Yeah, it was really crazy. I mean, one specific moment I remember, which led me to think that, okay, this is, this is, this is spiritual. I remember I was walking um, and I felt like something just shoved me right here, like in the back and just led me to the room where I was, I felt like I was forced to masturbate. And as I was doing, I was crying and I was crying. I said, God, this is not me. I don't want it. I'm asking you to take this away. I don't know why I keep doing this. I really, I really don't want to do this. And that was the moment when God told me it's because you need deliverance. Like I see your heart, I see your desire, but you need to get delivered. Um, this is this is just to show us that we're not fighting against flesh and blood but it's the spiritual powers that make one to be bowed down to sin and Jesus Christ came to set us free amen and you're I know that God continued to set you free further on and can you mention a little bit more about that yeah it was pretty amazing so um, after I realized you know I got delivered from one thing I'd go in there I have I felt like I was free enough to go in the prayer room but every time I'd feel the presence of the Lord I start gagging and I was like okay that means I'm not and it, it wouldn't be just like it would be a natural gagging and I realized I needed more deliverances and then God led me to watch the video by Pastor Vlad of deliverance self-deliverance at home and um, it was in the morning I started worshiping sent the kids off to school and it's as if devil knew I was going to get delivered. I mean, I turned on worship music. I was like, you're going to get out. Like, whatever's in you, you're going to get out right now. And I got in the room. I laid out the towel on the floor. I started, that was 9 o'clock in the morning. I started watching the video. As I was watching, I was watching the sermon Pastor Vlad was giving, um, I started falling asleep. And that, I slept all night just fine. But it was in crazy sleep. Like, I, I, I couldn't keep my eyes open. I said, God, I need this deliverance. Um, and I was able to watch it through the whole thing. Then as Pastor Vlad gave the steps, how the deliverance was gonna go. And he started praying for the renouncement of the sins. And he, when he was, he would mention every other sin, I would be fine. As soon as he touched the topic of generational um, curses, I started gagging really bad. Um, and the same thing happened. I renounced it, renounced all the generation curses in my family for my mom. Um, and I was set free. Um, so my relationship with God just started like, it had a huge jump start. Um, I feel like I'm so hungry for the, for the word of God. You know, I crave, he wakes me up at 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning. And I just don't do anything. I just run to the prayer room. And I, he feeds me. He feeds me with his truth. I feel like right now is the time when he grounds me and roots me in his truth. Um, so I can walk in that truth. And Julia, can you share with us a word of advice to those that are maybe facing the same challenges, maybe seeing these uh, continuous cycles of it. What advice can you give them uh, to seek that freedom? And a lot of times we downplay, we think it's not that big of a deal. We listen to advice of other people. In my case, I knew 
deep inside, when I was alone, one-on-one -on -one with myself and God, I knew there was issue that I needed to be set free. So I guess I would say, listen to what God is trying to tell you. If, if you feel like you need deliverance, it's better to take the step and go and get delivered. And if you don't, you don't. But if you do, I mean, come on, you're going to get the, the best life with Jesus. And one more question to those that feel like they grew up a Christian whole their life and they have this idea, I cannot have these uh, effects of evil in my life. How can you break that idea? Well, look at me. I mean, baptized since I was nine years old. I grew up in a Christian religious home. I loved, the, I seemed, I thought I loved the Lord. And I grew up with the mentality that no, you cannot have the demon inside you. But even if fear, if you open the doors to sin, that's it, they're in there. You need to get rid of them. 